African Americans in Wilmington and throughout the South were forced to maintain their own institutions for learning, black schools, where the resources for books were scarce, but the standards for education were at their highest so that new generations to come could combat racism. In Wilmington, one of those historic black schools was Williston Senior High School. I think when you think of Williston, uh, two approaches come to mind. One was standards, uh, minimal standards and higher standards. And the people tasked to educate uh, the black community uh, in, in the 50s, 60s, 40s uh, demanded uh, high standards. Opened in 1915, originally as Williston Industrial School, the first black public school in North Carolina to be accredited by the State Department of Education, Williston Senior High School indeed wasn't just one of the best black schools in the state, but one of the best schools, black or white, in the South. With a strong, dedicated staff of administrators and teachers from the community, Williston was not just about learning American history and math, but also black history, cultural refinement, and leadership. When I came to Williston, first Williston Industrial High School, and then, of course, Williston Senior High School, I found a faculty that was dedicated 100% to seeing that those students learned and learned in an excellent or superior manner. But I found these individuals who put their arms around those students, physically and literally, academically, and pushed them and guided them and suggested to them, telling them, you've got to be doubly good You've got to learn 100% because you are going to be judged when you graduate from the school. We love you, but we will also discipline you and we will teach you all that we know. Williston's fine tradition of excellence was reflected in its many outstanding graduates, like legendary tennis champion Althea Gibson, Dr. Philip Clay, former chancellor of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, basketball hall of famer and famous harlem globetrotter metal arc lemon and this great man of history joseph mcneil who on february 1st 1960 joined with three other students from north carolina a t university when they walked into a downtown greensboro fw woolworth store and ordered food at the counter in the whites only section that singular act changed the course of the civil rights movement forever enshrining Joseph McNeil, who later became an Air Force officer and Federal Aviation Administration official, and the Greensboro Four as courageous heroes in American history. Thousands of others spontaneously deciding that it was appropriate to take a stand, uh, to, to be strong, uh, to be nonviolent, to uh, endure the threats from the Klan, and to not be afraid and to come back the next day. Uh, we learned an awful lot in a very short period of time and we became extraordinary, extraordinary citizens. What the uh, folks in Williston did in terms of preparing us to accept the challenges that we would meet later on in life, to take those challenges on and, and to bring about change and never forget where we came from and where we had to go. Like Joseph McNeil, there was yet another historic Williston Senior High School alumnus of note, and he was the publisher of Wilmington's longtime African-American newspaper, The Wilmington Journal. His name was Thomas C. Gervais. It was in the 1940s when Gervais, a Wilmington native, took over the Cape Fear Journal, the African-American newspaper started by his father, Robert S. Gervais, and changed its name to the Wilmington Journal. Giving voice to Wilmington's poor and downtrodden, Gervais' newspaper gave African-Americans in Wilmington hope. He loved what he did. 
And because of that, I think he was very, very successful. Not only did he love what he was doing, he loved the community that he was working for. And the community knew that. The community, the black community loved my father because he was committed, he was, he was genuine. All the news without fear of favor. That, that was the motto created in 1927, and once again, it is, it is still the motto, and people knew this. There were some folk, of course, who didn't like him, but uh, it, it, it really didn't matter to him because he fought for what was right. He fought for human rights, and there was never a challenge that was too big for him, and if he had to do it by himself, he did it by himself. Gervais had also served at one time as president of the National Newspaper Publishers Association, the voice of black newspapers across the nation, founded in 1940. NNPA, then and now, promoted equal citizenship as it proudly chronicled African-American history in the making. Amid racially troubled times, Thomas Gervais was considered a leader in Wilmington's black community and a staunch supporter of Williston Senior High. But that loyalty would be put to the test by a friend of Gervais and another respected leader in Wilmington's African-American community, Dr. Hubert Eaton of the NAACP. Long before the 1954 U.S. Supreme Court decision striking down racial segregation in the schools, the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, had been working in the South and specifically in North Carolina since before 1920. The civil rights organization was staunchly against segregated schools, agreeing with the Supreme Court that they were inferior to their white counterparts. In Wilmington, Dr. Eaton filed a federal lawsuit in March of 1964 against the New Hanover County Public School System on behalf of his young daughter, Carolyn, challenging the school board to end segregated schools. Ten years after the, as I stated, after the uh, 54 decision, uh, I began to make some contact with the Legal Defense Fund to file a suit here in Wilmington uh, simply to request that the Board of Education obey the law. And that was the beginning of the integration of the schools in New Hanover County. At the time, it was felt that some black students would be sent to all white schools and some white students would be sent to all black schools, like Williston Senior High, which was academically considered just as good, if not better, than its white counterparts. As with other North Carolina school districts, the New Hanover Board of Education dragged its feet following the directives of the federal court to desegregate, claiming that there was nothing wrong with its racially segregated school system. But then, in 1968, two dramatic events happened that changed the course of history for Wilmington and the world. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life, longevity has its place. I was uh, a worshiper of Dr. King. No question. It pierced me. Like, um, he was our champion. I mean, you know, I mean, some other may say something, but as far as I, as far as I saw it, there's one guy out there, and there was, you know, who was standing up against all the powers to be and talk about the inequality in America. Like other major American cities, Wilmington exploded in violence. The assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a shock. On the day he died, Dr. King was supposed to be in Wilmington, taking part in a voter registration drive at Williston Senior High, arranged by Dr. Hubert Eaton. King had canceled two days before to stay in Memphis. That was just the first blow to Williston's African-American students. Just two months later, in June 1968, the New Hanover School Board, under growing pressure from the federal courts to submit a comprehensive racial desegregation plan in answer to Dr. Eaton's 1964 lawsuit, did the unthinkable. The New Hanover School Board voted, as part of its overall plan, 
to immediately discontinue the county's only black high school, Williston Senior High, and send its 900 black students to predominantly white New Hanover High and John T. Hargett High School in the fall. On July 30th, the New Hanover School Board attorney publicly made it clear that Williston Senior High, like other great black schools throughout the South at the time, quote, no longer legally exist. Instead, it was changed to a junior high school, all in the name of desegregation. It was, it was like losing a relative. It was like, I mean, I don't remember crying, but I remember the, the emptiness I felt, um, knowing that I wasn't gonna be able to go to that place that everybody, your older brothers and sisters and cousins, your older siblings talked about so deeply, you know? Wilson this and Wilson that and the football team and the basketball teams and the football games you're going to finally be a part of all of that and they shut it down and they're telling you that you got to go to the white school. Williston Senior High was shuttered so quickly that very little of its proud banners, trophies or history could be saved. The school system had it all thrown away. That's where we learned how to get along. That's where we grew together and no matter what Nobody tells you, um, it's, it's still the greatest school under the sun. It meant a lot to black people to go to Wilson. My parents went there, my brothers and sisters went there. All of us wanted to go, go to school there. It was just very important. It was a center of pride for the black community. And it was, one of the things that we all look forward to growing up. Many in Wilmington's African-American community were outraged, and so was publisher Thomas Gervais of the Wilmington Journal. My father was a graduate of Williston, and he loved Williston. He loved Williston dearly. He did not want Williston uh, closed or Williston um, demoted from a senior high school to, at that time, a junior high school. It is now, of course, a middle school. He, he felt that Williston was a school where the instructors and the teachers, the principal, etc., were all capable of, of giving a quality education to any child, whether that child be black, or white. Oh, that freedom and justice for me.